11 months ago, I bought this Warren Pahi 42 Polynesian style catamaran and this is a proper ocean going design of a boat but this one is a massive project. All of these Warham catamarans start out life as a set of plans and anyone with a little bit of carpentry experience can actually build them themselves out of plywood and epoxy. This one unfortunately was never finished by the original builder who did do a good job after the builder stopped building it, it was then left at anchor for 10 years where it was left to rot. Hence the price of 2,000 euros. And it took me a while to actually find a boatyard that would take on a project of this size. But when I did, I managed to get quite a lot of work done. Pretty much the first thing I did was close up all the through holes, eliminating any risk of those failing and water getting in. I'm gonna have to be pretty resourceful with how I do my water, my tanks and my toilet, but I really like that little bit of safety. I fixed the windows. Uh, they were left open, no screws, no sealing, and a lot of water had got in, so there was a lot of rot repairs to do around the window apertures. So I sorted that out to try and get the boat sealed up so that no more rain could get in. The beams turned out to be way more rotten or they turned out to have a lot more work that needed doing on them and that set me back a lot in terms of time. But I fixed two of them properly and uh, the other two are in pretty good condition but could probably do with a little bit more work. With the help of some very generous friends, we fixed all the little tiny problems with the hull we primed it properly and we really did a good job of painting it and it's probably one of the best things that we've done to the boat so far. Obviously the boat's just outside Amsterdam but my dad was working hard in the background making some engine sleds which will hold two 9.9 .9 outboards. I've also been struggling a little bit to get those attached to the boat so that they don't wobble around too much and that they're safe for any big waves which I'm sure to encounter in the future. I also installed a really crucial beam for the mast to sit on and lots and lots of other little jobs. Last week we made two cap shroud chain plate backing plates which had to be angled so that they would fit against the bulkhead because the holes where the chain plates were were left open on the port side and a lot a lot of water had got in there and rested and rotted out a lot of the material obviously i patched up that area and last week we were making these beefy chain plates out of stainless steel and i hadn't welded before but thanks a lot as well for your positive feedback and all your comments and likes on the last video that brings us to this week's video. Obviously I'm still back in the UK making the most of hot showers, ovens, microwaves, fridges, freezers and toilets and whilst I'm just here taking a micro break uh, we're going to be working on the steering system. On the plans you can see that there's the option of building your own plywood steering wheel and it's very simple in that the shaft for that steering wheel just goes through a wooden block and you also have a drum attached to the steering wheel for rope steering and the ropes uh, go from pulleys to the tiller bar and it's a very very basic but effective steering setup. So this week we're building that. Over the last week I've just been ordering all the bits. Me and my dad have been putting our heads together thinking about how we're going to do it. We're going to follow the plans except we've made the wooden block a lot larger. Rather than using a brass bolt, we have stainless steel shaft. That is actually an inch. The steering wheel, I decided, we saved a lot of money on the stainless steel that we used for the chain plate, backing plates last week. And you know what? You gotta treat yourself sometimes. So I've got this proper swanky pants steering wheel. Stainless steel and teak. Oh, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> So we have this, instead of making it just out of plywood, sorry Hanukkah, I know you love plywood and I've been doing a lot of stuff out of metal, but yeah we've got this. And also rather than, rather than using plywood for the drum, for the steering wheel, for the rope steering, we're going to use this piece of aluminium which is a big chunk which I've bought. This steering wheel was £165. <laughs> but because I saved a lot of money, it's, it's, I don't know, it's nice to have nice things sometimes. And I think this was maybe £35, this big chunk of aluminium. 
the stainless I think was 30 something pounds. We're going to drill through this block of wood and so we've got oil light bushings. I'm not sure if oil light means anything to anyone but from what I've heard they give a good, well not too much friction. So we're going to drill through that and put those through there. And to drill through the wood we've got a proper forstner bit. Hopefully the camera is focusing in. So to get this shaft to fit on this wheel and to get, I think the bushings need routing and a few other bits and bobs and that needs doing on a lathe. And we're also gonna to go to Wales to visit my mum and dad's boat. We're gonna have a little holiday, maybe do some fishing and just chill out. And then next week, well, in this video, we're gonna get it all assembled as good as possible. Hopefully we'll have a, most of a steering system. So we're in Wales and we're at mum and dad's boat and we're gonna go out and do some fishing. Hopefully we can catch a fish. The weather's not too great. It might uh, get quite windy, but it will be interesting to see what it's like on this motorboat. I've never been out on this boat of theirs before. They always had boats when I was growing up, but they were always little speed boats, little motorboats. So this one is their retirement luxury boat. <laughs> This is luxury boating, this. <laughs> no wind, no rain. So it seems there's not too many fish around this time of year. That's why you call it fishing and not catching. In fact, an interesting fact is this island is St. Tudswald's Island, which Bear Grylls has a house on. The survival expert, Bear Grylls. It's his island. It's his island. It's actually, it's actually his, his island. island. And the one next to it is Carla Lane's. Who's Carla Lane? She's a writer, she's a, she actually died now, but absolute genius. She wrote Butterflies, The Library Birds, Bread, and they're just the most funny. Wait and see, yeah. they're just brilliant. 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 Dad's taking the car that he got for free for its MOT 
it's going to be the family courtesy car because he always does all the work on all the family's cars, bless him, while working four days a week. And also, I was told by a commenter that this American flag was the wrong way around and it's actually disrespectful to have it that way. I think it's this one. I hope it's this one. So I'm going to change that the right way around. A lot of people ask, why the American flags? Well, my dad is obsessed with American cars and has been since he was a teenager. And my parents just absolutely love America. They think it's a great place. They love going there on holiday. Well, one of my brothers is also married to an American girl. And my parents also named their boat American Girl as well. <laughs> so yeah, just appreciate the place. I'm gonna get the table out, the pillar drill. There's gonna be a lot of drilling, tapping and assembling going on. If you watch the YouTube channel Sailing Seabird, link in the description, this pillar drill was given to me by Stu and he's the most chill guy ever. He's probably the most chill guy you'll see on YouTube. At the time they didn't have space for it on their boat so we took it on our catamaran and later gave it to dad and he's been making good use of it. It's an interesting drill. It's like a belt driven drill and it's made by Parkside, which have obviously been making tools for quite a while, but you'll find Parkside tools in the discount supermarket here. A lot of you guys will know if you're from the UK or Europe, Aldi or Lidl. They're not bad tools. They're not professional grade, but they do the job. But yeah, nice to see a a classic Parkside. So we have a bit of a problem in that the forcing a bit that I've got, it won't go all the way through the wood. So we're just trying to work out the best way to do it. So to counteract the problem of the short force in a bit, we're just going to tack weld a long 8mm socket to it. Do you like your Christmas present, Dad? I want your Christmas present, yeah. <laughs> tools, the way to go. Proper man. tools. Yeah. Slightly out, isn't it? You actually worked on those bushes because the shaft turned out to be one inch instead of 25 mil. Yeah, so I just had to bore bore the bush out to uh, to an inch. This will be the drum for the line which yeah. you've bored out yeah. an inch hole. So to keep the rope on the drum, we're gonna yeah we've, we've got those circular discs. Yeah. Are you will you put a key? I don't know. Yeah, a um, keyway or a grub. 
grub screws there. Yeah, we might even put a screw in it and like a locating dowel rather than a key. Yeah. Because it's tapered the shaft so it'll lock on. We drilled and tapped it so yeah. that it'll pull onto the taper. Yeah. Because you see at the back it's just got a bit going a bit more to so lock onto the taper there. Yeah. yeah. Compression. Yeah. So Dad managed to get these out of a scrap metal bin and these will keep the rope on the spool. Yeah, we've got a little book here called a Zeus book. When did you get that? About 1979. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think metric had only just come out then. Well, no, metric had been out for a while, but it has got metric and all the old UNC, UNF, Whitworth. And basically, before Google, this I don't, it's got all your information here, clearance halls, how to work out, PCDs, you know, uh, it's, it's got all sorts of information. As an engineer, it was your Bible then, really. It was the first thing you got as an apprentice at the training school, and it's got all, all the information, so we're going to tap a, a 5 mil thread in there, So and the tapping drill for that's 4.2, so you drill it 4.2, then you can tap it. And the clearance hole, if you're bolting something to it, it's 5.1, so it's just over 5 mil, so that's your clearance hole. So we'll be putting... A clearance hole in here. Yeah, a countersunk clearance hole in there. We're going to countersink it after. Yeah. And we're going to tap, tap four holes in that and bolt it to it. So we've drilled through and we're going to eventually put this sort of grub screw in to lock it to the shaft. We drilled pilot holes and then went through with a 6.8 drill and then now what we need to do is tap it out to 8mm 
And to do that, we're gonna use these eight mil taps, but there's three different types. So if you look closely, you can see they're slightly different at the end. I think most people just usually use a two, uh, but if you're going all the way through, you wanna use a plug so that you get threads all the way to the end. And also, once we've gone through and we've tapped it and everything, obviously we'll drill a little divot into the shaft. And to do that, my dad's machined this drill bit so that it's the same as the machined end of this set screw. So we'll drill into the shaft not too far, and then we have that shape. So this little machined end will sit into the shaft. So we've got our two, two divots. Just we just need to tap that one out and then that should a little bit deeper. Maybe. Yeah, it's quite a bit deeper. Remarkably solid, especially this bit. Uh, I do wonder whether this block is enough to carry this weight and the weight of the and the forces that will be present here. Uh, but time will tell, and it's not really too difficult to to get another block of wood or or reinforce it. Uh, we also need to attach it at the back so that it doesn't slide off like this. Uh, but yeah, this, this whole thing is incredibly solid. The taper on the shaft, is we're now just like compressing the wheel onto that, but we could also put something in the keyway or, uh, or machine a keyway to make it extra solid, but I think that would probably be okay as it is anyway. But yeah, we're gonna work on these things uh, over the next few weeks. I'm really happy with how it looks. Yeah, it's uh, a big job ticked off um, and yeah we've we've got a couple of big jobs ticked off with those chain plate backing plates and when I do go back which will be in about four weeks we'll start assembling everything and then obviously when I get back it's my goal to be sailing this year so it's going to be a hard push through the spring and summer and hopefully by the end of the summer um, uh, the boat will be movable or at least sailable and then I can think about what I want to do, where I want to go. In the next video, I'm going to break down exactly how much money I've spent so far. We'll see. Stay tuned for that. Subscribe and stay notified. Uh, and also, thank you so much to everyone who liked and commented on the last video. I asked you guys to help me out in that way and you, you did. A lot of uh, got a lot more likes and comments on the last video and it helped a lot so thank you very much so if you can do that again i would really appreciate it <laughs> uh, and also a massive thanks as well to my patrons my coffee givers super thanks paypal one-off givers uh i've like i said last week i'm just going to do one video every two weeks while i'm away from the boat because it's difficult to well it's not as easy to make these videos when I'm not at the boat, when there's loads of little bits and bobs to film. So yeah, we'll just try and give you a, a decent video. <laughs> well, hopefully a decent video every two weeks. And then it'll be regular videos, weekly videos. So thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one in two weeks time. All right. <laughs>